Oh man, this thing is hot. <laughs> Holy cow. A very basic device aimed at entry level users, but has some unique features that make it really useful for recovery situations, as well as for people who might have large amounts of funds kicking around uh, in old uh, hot wallets where they have just raw private keys or old paper wallets. So in this video, I'm just going to run through the unboxing, setup and review of the Elipal Titan. This uh, sample was sent to me by the people at Elipal, so let's uh, crack it open and have a look. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe, and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. All right, so basically they sent me these two devices together. You've got the Elipal and you've got their uh, metal mnemonic backup tool. I'm actually consider these two things in separate videos. Uh, so in this video, we're looking at the Elipal. And uh, if you want to see my thoughts on their metal uh, mnemonic backup, you can find that video here. All right, so this is what we start with. So let's see, we'll just put that over there. And let's see. So basically we get this, so we get a little thank you card. Don't need that. And oh, that's handy. It's like a little pull strap to get it out. So this is the actual Elipal Titan itself. We get some instructions. So that is mnemonic card there, 12 word card. This is a little instruction manual. Comes with a 16 gigabyte micro SD. Another micro USB cable for the collection. And this is the little charging dongle that goes on the bottom there. And this is actually just magnetic, so I believe that just clips right on. Though it doesn't actually sit flush, but we'll see if that's an issue in a minute. And there you go. So that's everything you get in the box. All right, so let's just follow the quick start guide. So let's get this thing charging. Okay. There we go. Okay, and I've actually just got an iPhone for this because it's easier to record the screen. So let's have a look. So we'll just record, we'll just scan the QR code. There we go. Okay, so we'll just get the app. There we go. So that is on its way. Open. Elipal would like to send you notifications, sure. Yep, start. Big long terms and conditions. Yep. Okay, so we have an Elipal cold wallet, so let's do that. Please press the button to scan Elipal app connect QR code. I'm guessing at this point we need to actually move on to the Elipal. Let's try and turn it on. So let's get cracking. So we'll go English, download the Elipal app. So we've done that. Next. Okay, so we can create an account. So we can recover via mnemonic. Oh yeah, it supports all the different lengths, which is good. We can also import an account. Actually, this is really useful because we can actually just import raw private keys, which is particularly useful if you've got cryptocurrencies like, you know, Doge, where you might have old paper wallets or maybe an old hot wallet backup, which actually has huge amounts of value in it. So you can actually use this to offline sweep that, which is extremely useful. But we'll come back to that later. We'll just stick with the defaults for now. So we'll just call it test. Test. And we'll just do crypto guide. Ah, and these numbers and letters. There we go. So we'll stick with SegWit, though I'm guessing that means it won't support native SegWit when we come to that. So let's just have a look at passphrase. Oh yeah, someone had asked me about this actually. So BIP39 passphrase can go up to 32 letters and numbers. So we can just use all the standard symbols and things for that. Well, look, we won't worry about a passphrase just for the purpose of this video. 
And if you find all this stuff about password, passphrase, and uh, seed phrase confusing, I cover that in this video here. We go create account. Okay. All right, so let's back up the mnemonic. Please keep in mind, mnemonic is important for safety. Once lost, you will never get your assets back. Yep. Mnemonic will not store in or export from early pal. This is the only chance to back it up. Yep. Please back it up in a place without cameras. Yep. So don't do it on a live YouTube video like I'm doing it now. Okay. And there is the seed. So it's just 12 words. So I'll just write those down now. All right, so that's our 12 words. So it's only 12, not 24. So we're gonna verify our backup. And this is actually even more important with 12 words than 24, because again, you could have an error in here and uh, it would actually still check some correctly uh, a lot more often with a 12 word seed versus 24. Verify, backup successful. Okay. So basically these are just all the different coins. So you just turn things on and off, basically. We'll say, okay. Okay, so basically we just get one account per crypto, but the advantage here actually is we can have multiple accounts. So whether it's multiple accounts, multiple mnemonics or multiple seeds. So let's just go back. Okay, so let's try and connect this to the phone. So we'll say connect to cold wallet, align QR code, so connect to app, so let's just scan that. Right, so you basically just add a bunch of accounts. The other interesting thing I just noticed, if I press this button here, you can actually pair all of the applications all at once. So if I just play auto, press auto play, I can then add coins and hopefully that's just gonna auto scan through. Yeah, there we go. Nice, there we go. That's handy, automatically did them all. So we can say back. Okay. So now all of the same accounts are in here that are in here. And they're even in the same order, that's handy. Okay, so let's see what happens if I receive some coins. So if I go into Bitcoin and just say receive, I get the address there and let's just see on here, should I get the same address on both? Yes, I do. So let's just send a small amount there. Now, let's see. So the question is, does it show unconfirmed transactions at all? So, doesn't seem to show the unconfirmed transactions. A Bitcoin transaction has one confirmation now, so I would have expected to show up at least a little bit. The transaction has two confirmations now. Come on. Let's just try and send a Bitcoin transaction. Okay, so let's give this a crack. So let's send. Now let's see if we can scan this. No. Can't scan an address with a Bitcoin prefix. These fee suggestions are just insane, given that things like one sat per byte is clearing the mempool, 100 sats per byte, like no way. Look, let's just customize that and just say two. <laughs> so we'll say the amount, max, Okay, now it works. So we couldn't we couldn't even get the max out button to work before because it didn't think there was enough in there for the fees. Basic QR code generator. Don't do this, this is really insecure. All right, so it can scan native SegWit. It just absolutely cannot handle having the prefix. Oh, here we go. Okay. So we've got all the transaction details, that looks good. Manually turn page. It took so long, this has gone to sleep. So let's sign, and I'll put in the password again. Okay. 
There's a code. Next. Okay. Security notice. Yep, those details look pretty good. Okay. Now we'll click that. And transaction submitted. Done. Oh, there you go. Close. So let's have a look. So we got basically some markets, finance, so you can do swaps and things on like the Binance decks. Right. And we've got D apps as well. Right, so just your sort of pancake swap sort of stuff. If we go into profile, manage account. Oh yeah, we can change this name, we can delete it. We can also add multiple accounts for uh, software wallets as well as hardware. This, this is identical to what's on there. So this is actually handy in that if you lost this or damaged this, you can just recover the seed straight into here. Though obviously that downgrades your security. What else can we do? Oh yes, and we can also just import an account, buy a mnemonic, key store, or any of those things. And what else we got? So what have we got in settings? Currencies, right, colors, passwords. So the closest thing you can get to a pin is an Android, for the actual device itself, is an Android pattern unlock code. And once you are in, you have full visibility of all of the accounts. So the pin doesn't, the screen lock doesn't really give you anything meaningful in terms of plausible deniability or anything like that in terms of if you're using a BIP39 passphrase because all of the accounts um, are visible and are there. You can see them all. Uh, you can see all the addresses associated with them. The password prompt happens when you go to sign. The uh, standard that's used by the QR codes for passing data backwards and forwards is actually quite well documented and it's on their GitHub. And they also include a uh, open source JavaScript based wallet client that you can also use as well. While there isn't really any third party software that can just take advantage of this, this actually makes it possible to have some really good insight that the device is only doing exactly what it should do. And as part of the testing for this, I actually had to play around and uh, crafted some just test transactions entirely uh, by hand without needing to use any of the software uh, that they provide at all. So, uh, you know, definitely something that you could use in a very, very trust minimized way if you really want to. So the uh, Doge has finally come. Oh yeah, there's the doge. Now the question is, if I hit receive, do I get another address? And the answer is no. Right, so this just reuses the same addresses over and over for everything. This non-standard way that the LEPAL handles things like Bitcoin addresses and just reuses the same address over and over again is also gonna cause you a problem if you have something like a Ledger or a Trezor or whatever, and you're trying to use the same seed from that device in the LEPAL. In that what you'll see is the balance that I have here in the LEPAL is actually different to the balance that I have in Electrum. And the reason that is, is if I go onto the addresses tab in Electrum, you can see that it only shows me the balance for this first address here and doesn't show the balance for this second address at all. And unfortunately, there's actually nothing you can do about this. It's just a limitation with the LEPAL. One last thing to check is let's see how this goes if I go to scan a paper wallet. So let's say I've got an old Bitcoin paper wallet. So I can say connect to app. And there we go. So that is the paper wallet address. Though interestingly, it doesn't actually sync. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, that's weird. Okay, so it just took a little while. So it has actually synced all the transactions 
uh, that I did on the previous video for this. But this is super handy because it actually gives you a way to securely sweep uh, paper wallets for basically all of these uh, different types of wallets. Maybe uh, you created a wallet using something like Dogecoin Core back in the day uh, and you've actually got all of those private keys existing somewhere offline but you know rather than just sweep them using a hot wallet you want to be able to do something a bit more secure and uh, yeah you know this is definitely uh, a really powerful tool especially for cryptos like Doge where the uh, quality of the software that's out there is just shocking. You've still got what are essentially versions of multi-bit kicking around uh, for people using Doge which is not really what you want if you're handling meaningful amounts of money. So while waiting for that, let's have a look at how firmware updates work. So update, update file was not found. So we've got the file on the micro SD. Okay, let's give this a go. So turn off the early pal Titan. Now turn it on. Okay, there we go. So copying files. Oh man, this thing is hot. <laughs> Holy cow. Okay, summary time. So as I mentioned at the beginning, this is a fairly basic device. Uh, it allows you to have just, you know, one account per crypto. It doesn't support things like native SegWit or anything else like that. However, uh, it's great in that it actually does use, you know, open communication and does make it possible for people to be able to create third party wallets uh, and software using this platform. It definitely doesn't have the standard sorts of security features like you would expect on a ledger. Things like an actual device pin, you know, the best you can get on this is Pat and unlock. Uh, it doesn't really allow you to do plausible deniability in any meaningful way in that the device can just unlock uh, and all of the accounts are there all at once. Um, so that's, you know, something to consider. It doesn't have anything like a secure element. It's just a ruggedized Android phone. Though there is something to be said for a device that is fully portable, battery powered, and can be easily initialized or used in basically any setting without the need to be tethered to a PC or a power supply. Never mind the fact that if you, you know, lose or damage this little charging unit here, you're pretty much stuffed. But depending on your situation, you might appreciate the sort of large color touchscreen approach they've gone with. It does have a few key features that I think are going to make it really useful for some very specific uh, use cases for uh, long timers or advanced users. Number one, the ability to be able to offline sweep paper wallets. Uh, there is simply no other sort of easy to use device in the market that allows you to do this. You know, I've done a video that looks on how to securely offline sweep Bitcoin wallets using Electrum and uh, you know, while I think going the full open source from start to finish route with Electrum is an excellent way to go, this is actually a very good solution that doesn't require a high level of technical knowledge at all. You know, pretty hard to screw up, frankly. And uh, if you're someone who's looking to sweep some fairly large uh, holdings from some older wallets where you just have a bunch of raw private keys, particularly again for coins like Doge, where, uh, you know, good solutions to offline sign uh, things like this that are actually easy to do aren't really readily available, uh, this is definitely a fantastic device for that. Uh, the ability to have multiple mnemonics in there is also useful uh, and again it's actually a device I'll be making a lot of use of just for recoveries and those kinds of things where I'm like you know handling lots of different seeds, lots of different private keys uh, and all of that sort of stuff and trying to do so in a secure way. Likewise, if you've done something like send VET to an Ethereum address or something like that, uh, the import private key feature of this wallet actually allows you to do the uh, sort of recovery side of that where you're moving the funds back uh, from the VET wallet to an Ethereum wallet without actually compromising the security of that Ethereum address and that private key. Uh, obviously, you still need to do the key extraction part in Tails Linux, but the advantage of this is that it actually allows you to do some of these recoveries in a way that doesn't actually compromise the private key. So there you go. I've added the LAPAL Titan onto my hardware wallet feature comparison website so you can see how it compares with a whole range of other wallets that I've got there. And uh, if you think it would be a good fit for your situation and want to help me out in the process, there's an affiliate link where you can buy it in the description. Other than that, if you have any questions about the device, its functionality, or my impressions on it, you know, just leave a question in the comments. I do my best to answer every single comment that's in there. And uh, likewise, if you have any experiences that you want to share, uh, be sure to leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful, and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.